I hate friction. Um, and friction can come in many different ways in my personal workflow. I want to be able to work at the speed of my thoughts. I don't want to slow down because some tool is making me slow down. Well, most people, when they use macOS or Windows, they switch between apps by doing command tab, right? They command tab between what they're currently using and what they want to be using. The problem is with command tab, you don't always know what's going to come next, right? And you're like, hey, I'm in my browser right now. I, want, I need to go to my terminal to enter a command. OK, now I do command tab, and then I have to look at the, the, the window that pops open, and I have to go, OK, which one's my terminal? Command tab, 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 I have to press it three times, and then I'm at my terminal. So there's like four or five thoughts that happen in that short period of time, right? And each one of those thoughts sort of slows you down. Before we start, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourselves and let us know what you've been doing. I'm Max. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stellate now. By trade, and I think this will come up during this uh, Raycast demo as well, I'm a software engineer. I've been a software engineer for many years. I've done lots of work in the React and Node and GraphQL open source ecosystems. I've been coding for many, many years. And uh, I love building my own tools. They don't let me code at work anymore, uh, because it turns out when you're a CEO, you have a lot of tasks. And so uh, a long time ago, we decided uh, maybe Max shouldn't code anymore in critical stuff, because that's going to slow <laughs> us down immensely. I code on my own side projects now. And a big part of those side projects are tooling that help me be a better CEO, that helped me be a more productive CEO, that works just in the way that I need it to. In many ways, I'm a unique person and I interact with the world in a very unique way, and I want to interact with the world in a very unique way. And that way doesn't always work in all the tools. And so I, I, I build a lot of stuff with Raycast and also with other, with other tooling to create systems for myself and processes for myself that work more closely with how I want them to work. I think this is a great moment for you to go ahead, share your screen with us, and then we can understand a bit more about how you use Raycast, how you think about stuff, and how does Raycast help you be more productive with all of these things that you got to do on a day-to-day -day basis. The first and most important thing is this. Now we're talking. The Raycast confetti. I use this during meetings when I screen share all the time. This is one of my most used commands. For me, Again, going back to, to working at the speed, at the speed of thought, this sits at hyperkey R for Raycast and then P for party. So I, I just know that if I, I, this is a Raycast party and I can trigger it as many times as I want. I really like how your way of doing hotkeys is already quite different than mine and <laughs> then like most people have talked about because you do two <laughs> consecutive letters, right? Yep. Uh, Interesting. In fact, that was one of the biggest improvements that I was able to make to my own setup. Because if you think about it, if you do like command or alt, you very quickly run out of space for all the common actions that you do every day. And if you want to have somewhat semantic hotkeys like we talked about, where you want to have G for Google Chrome and E for email, very quickly you're going to have conflicts, right? The reason why I built the whole Carabiner element setup is so that I could have these keyboard shortcut layers, where I have hyperkey, which is for me caps lock, and then every single letter is a sub-layer of more and more commands, right? And so, for example, one of my sub-layers is the Raycast layer. So when I press hyperkey R, I now have access to a whole keyboard that is just for stuff that I know happens in Raycast. And we can get into some of that, but one of it is confetti. If I press, if I press hyperkey R and then P, it opens Raycast confetti and does the Raycast. If I do hyperkey R A, it opens up AI chat that I use all the time. And so, um, kind of, that gives me more ability to have semantic, somewhat semantically sound keyboard shortcuts in many, many, many different layers. Absolutely. So what you're doing, is you are basically grouping the shortcuts under some sort of like category. In this case, R would be for Raycast. Exactly. Um, that's very cool. And that's a great way to think about it. And I also really like how the way that you're interacting with the Raycast specific uh, commands or shortcuts is just by calling the deep link, right? You just call open and you pass in the deep link and um, maybe some of you might know that every Raycast command has a deep link associated with it. So that is super clean and looks like it's quite easy to maintain and manage as well. So let me just open up Raycast. Really the most interesting thing um, are sort of these uh, couple commands that I created for my own personal needs. And the one that I use the most often is create notion to do, which for me is a hyper key space. So I just press um, caps lock or escape space and it opens up create a to do. Now this stores to-dos in Notion. And in fact, it works very similarly to how Todoist's sort of quick, quick to-do thing works. So let me give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's say I need to schedule uh, what's in my Raycast with 
Pedro, right? Now, um, maybe there's a candle link that you sent me, right? So I can put the candle link here and immediately it fills out the related URL, which is a separate property in um, Notion. Maybe there's a deadline. So if I write on, uh, say, March 12th, it automatically fills in the due date. And then also it fetches a list of projects from uh, a, a separate Notion board and I can do hashtag, say, um, uh, marketing or something, marketing page updates, and it will automatically connect it to that project in Notion as well. And then I can add some body text if I want to. This, this works very similar to other to-do list apps that you might have with this quick sort of input for to-dos. Oh, wow. I mean, that was amazing how you just wrote everything in natural language and you just filled in all the fields. This is what my to-do list looks like. I sort of blurred out a bunch of the sensitive things that I have in there. And essentially everything that gets created from Raycast turns into, in, into an inbox item, right? And then every morning I sit down and I go through my inbox and I prioritize it into to-do so that it just every single morning I have one to-do list that I work off of. And that's literally how I run my pretty much my entire life. Like everything that I do is in this to-do list and just gets prioritized. And then I, every single time I, I need to do something, I look at what is the top item on my to-do list and I go do that item. That's amazing. Super organized. And also uh, that command is just amazing. What, what is that? Like, did you just make that for yourself? Is that something that's in the store or is that something that's in your private store? Do you even have like a private store for Stellet or not? We do, um, because actually this to-do list is also used by some other people internally now, like Maria is one of our employees and she uses it too. Right. And so I published it in a private store so that she could also install the extension and then just create to-dos for herself. Oh, right. So um, that's a private extension for the team then. That's amazing. Yeah. You see when you hover over one of these commands, if you open up Raycast, and you see that it shows the hotkey that you have there, right? Control, Option, Shift, Command, Space. Mm -hmm. That's because this is your hyper key, right? All of these mm -hmm. bindings. Exactly. Did you know that we recently added a hyperkey uh, sort of identifier in Raycast? No way. No, I did not. Do you want me to show you? Yeah. So if you um, if you search in Ray, or if you just go to configure command, yeah, and then you go to advanced at the top bar, yeah, yeah, and then you see that there's a hyperkey option just below that sensitivity slider. Oh. There you go. If you toggle that. And then if you close the settings and open it up again. Oops, I opened up the wrong thing. No Look way, that. hyper key That's clean, space. I know. How good is that? That's awesome. That's really cool. I love that. Such a nice detail. Two more uh, commands that I wrote myself that I use all the time are open MXS Studies short link and create MXS Studies short link. Now, MXS Studies is just my own personal short link thing. These short links are stored in, guess what, GitHub. Uh, and actually they <laughs> use um, redirects to just redirect without having to use any service or anything. It's just a file in GitHub that, that redirects. And I realized that often I want to share a short link, but I don't actually <laughs> I don't actually remember what the short link was that I needed. And so now um, I, I have this search uh, functionality in just in Raycast itself that I can open. I literally press hyper key OL and it opens up just the screen to, to show me all the short links that I have so that I can easily copy paste them and use them. Um, and similarly, I have another one that lets me create a short link where whatever, is with the, whatever URL is copy pasted into my um, keyboard, clipboard right now will be automatically pasted. And then I just can just create um, a, a slug to do with Pedro. And now when I run this, it creates a short link. And oh, now if you go to that. MXS studies slash uh, whatever the, the slug was just was that I did, it will be directed <laughs> to the Notion page. The final command that I have is sync text replacements to snippets. Um, now, what, what even is happening here? So. The thing is that um, macOS has built in text replacement support. So you can have text replacement like I have QAS for my email, um, I have my address, I have, I have things that I, uh, uh, that, I, that I sort of write pretty frequently. Um, and they're all underneath Q, so because not many words start with Q, right? So, can, so I can have QAS and it's just my email. Um, I use this just like, as I'm sure you've seen with your snippets, um, um, bank that you created, um, just for things that I frequently type that I don't want to keep retyping. Now, the problem is that macOS's text replacement stuff um, doesn't work in all inputs. I don't know why, but for some reason, if you type it in the Google Chrome URL bar, if you type it in some random inputs that are not macOS native inputs, it just doesn't do the auto-completion. You, you will type QES and nothing happens. It doesn't do the, the, the replacement. It's really annoying. Um, so I was like, okay, let me just use Raycast snippets. But, you know, like they, they will work everywhere and they do work everywhere. The problem is Raycast snippets don't work on my phone. 
but I type a lot on my phone as well, and I want my text replacements on my phone as well. Now, macOS text replacements, they sync between your iPhone and your Mac. Raycast snippets don't work on my iPhone. So I have to have my text replacements in both macOS text replacements and in snippet. And so I wrote this extension that literally just calls out to the macOS um, core database of text replacements, turns them into the Raycast snippets format, and then imports them into Raycast snippets whenever I run this command. So every time I add a new text replacement, I run this command and it imports it into Raycast snippets so it works across all of my macOS and it works on my iPhone. That is genius. You got to publish that to the store, man. <laughs> like, it's such an ugly it. hack though. Holy smokes. I'll help you. I'll help you. We can clean this up, put a nice little icon there. <laughs> This, like, I need this, you know, I have the same problem. <laughs> and when you were talking about the issues, I was like, man, I know exactly what you're going to say, which is, <laughs> you know, you also need it on your phone, right? And it's true that Raycast snippets don't work on your phone yet, right? Yet. But mm. soon, that problem should be solved. Yes, please. There's three more things that I use pretty frequently to close us off here. Um, clipboard history, I'm not going to open that because I don't know what's in there. But uh, my, it's it's a it's an H for history, so R uh, hyperkey R H, um, and then I have hyperkey R one and two, and this is using an extension called Toothpick, which is one of my favorite extensions. It's in the store, which lets you manage Bluetooth devices, and I have one and two mapped to connect favorite device one and connect favorite device two. The reason is because I have two sets of AirPods. I have so many meetings that literally my AirPods will run out of juice. Like, I, I, I just have so many meetings as a CEO, like, I literally, I, was, I will be sitting there, my, my AirPods will be running out of juice, which is why I have two sets of AirPods, so that I can hot swap between them and I can always have a charged pair. Now, the problem is, if you have AirPods, you know this, you will put your AirPods in and they will randomly connect to your freaking phone for no reason. <laughs> they will just not connect to the thing that you're actually using. I don't know why it's so bad, but it always connects to the wrong thing. And so one and two just map to the two AirPods that I have. And so when it when it connects to the wrong thing again, I can just press uh, hyper key R one or two and it connects the AirPods to my Mac. Amazing. That I mean, I don't have that problem, but like that is amazing. I love it. A couple of months ago, Thomas, our CEO, which you know very well, tweeted which company will be the most important one in five years, right? And I thought it was an interesting tweet. And in the options there, it was a poll, was Meta, OpenAI, Apple, and Amazon. But then you replied, Raycast. And the reasoning for that is that you said own productivity. And I was reading that and I thought, this sounds really kind of powerful, you know, this concept of like, own your productivity. I want to ask you, what do you mean by that? What is your thinking behind this such powerful term? It's really born by my own experience. Like you just saw me use Raycast to work at the speed of thought and to build tools that work just the way that I need them to, right? Now, I'm a software engineer, I can write code to create a lot of these tools. But with Raycast, a lot of these tools actually are just getting built in, right? Window management is just built in, you don't need a separate app. If you use hypersonic for to-dos, you don't need a separate app. When somebody comes up with a new idea for, hey, I want to work faster in this way, let me build it. They might build it as a Raycast extension like I do, because it's just your central switcher for everything, your central dashboard for everything. And then they, would, they will publish it to the store and so everybody else can get it. And so to me, in a way that's similar to why so much innovation happened in the open source space, right? In the open source space, Whenever people solve their problem, they would open source a solution if it's something generic, right? And then other people would see the solution, they would go, wow, that's almost what I need, but I think it could be better if it, if it just did this one little thing. And they would just fork it and make their own version of it that did that little thing. I see the same thing happening with Raycast. I've been using Raycast for, I don't know, ever since it came out, three years, four years, I don't even remember, a long time. And it just keeps eating more and more and more of what I do every day, right? It keeps being more and more central to my personal productivity stack. And I can totally see that happening for other people too, right? The, the way I work is very unique to me. As you can see, I built my own extensions. I, 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 I think in a unique way and I, and I want to make sure that my productivity setup matches the way I think. But for, for many people, just installing the top 10 Raycast extensions is going to get you 10 times more productive already, right? Raycast has the potential to really change the global productivity of everybody, right? You install Raycast, you learn sort of the top 10 things that you need, and suddenly you can be way more productive and you can be way closer to working at the speed of thought. And so to me, Raycast really is at the core of my own productivity and I hope in the future of everybody's productivity. Man, it was absolutely amazing to have you on. I've had my mind blown so many times in this video. Like, <laughs> I think you are the most power user of Raycast that I've ever interviewed. 
even more than Thomas, who is the CEO of Raycast. <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge compliment. I will, I will take it. Uh, I will, I will keep pushing the boundaries and uh, good luck to Bruno, your video editor, for cutting all of this stuff together into a comprehensible video.